Welcome back, everybody. Well, we all know that having a baby or being pregnant, being a new parent is tough enough as it is. But in the midst of a global pandemic, you can imagine it would feel even that much more difficult. So with how to navigate what to expect when you're expecting, we welcome to the show Dr. Sheila Wajaya Singha. This is the perfect timing to have you here. Great to see you. Great to see you guys. Are pregnant women more vulnerable to COVID-19? And this is a great question. And I think one of the things that we have to preface any discussion around COVID-19 is that the information that we have currently is changing really rapidly based on new information that's coming out every day. And when it comes specifically to pregnancy and postpartum, the information is really rapidly changing as well. And so based on the information that we have at this point today, Infection with COVID-19 does not seem to affect pregnancy outcome. It does, mean that, does not mean that you have worse prognosis or get more sick than people who are not pregnant of your same age. So it's quite reassuring at this point. Again, it's information that is current, um, but it's really important. And it's, it is quite reassuring because there are other illnesses like the flu or influenza that we actually do worry about pregnancy because we know that pregnant individuals are higher risk when, they, when flu season comes around. But that does not seem to be the case with COVID-19 from the information that we have to date. Okay, Dr. Sheila, when I was pregnant, one of the things that I really loved was that every month I got to go and sit with my midwife and she would answer any questions that I might have. She would also do a fetal monitoring, like to check in on the baby's heartbeat and all kinds of things like that. What is happening in the face of this pandemic when it comes to one-on-one -on -one meetings with doctors and midwives? That's a great question. I think across the board in healthcare, we are being encouraged to try to make as many visits as possible virtual. And so that might be over the phone with video conferencing or email. Prenatal care is a little bit different because there are many essential visits that have to happen during your prenatal care. And the first thing I have to say to patients is, I know it's a scary time to not see your doctor and to feel like you shouldn't be going into a clinic, but during pregnancy, it's still really important that you do. And so what the Society of Obstetricians and Gynecologists has done and all the major medical bodies across the country have done is that they have formulated ways to try to revise the schedule so that there are still some essential visits that need to be done in person because it involves having an ultrasound or blood work or an in-person review, but many of the visits are now actually able to be done virtually. And so that's to try to keep you as safe as possible, but also still providing you good prenatal care. And this applies specifically to low-risk pregnancies. So individuals who are considered low-risk could have a revised schedule, but those who are having high-risk pregnancies, for whatever reason, may need to actually still see their doctor more frequently based on their own needs pre-pandemic, during the pandemic. That may not change. So the bottom line is really to speak to your own doctor or your midwife and find out what schedule is best and what can be done virtually and what needs to be done in person. Okay, so let's say you've been told we're going to have virtual appointments only. What does a mom-to-be need to know? So we may um, be asking you to do a few things at home on your own. So specifically, we may ask you to check your weight. We may ask you to check your blood pressure. So if you have a blood pressure cuff at home or at the pharmacy, people may check their own blood pressure. We're going to ask you to check the number of times your baby's moving um, per hour after what, closer to your third trimester. We'll, we'll find out because that's a good indication. And we may also how to do um, measurements of the baby's of your belly, which is also an indication to us of how well the baby's growing. So there are a few things that we'll ask you to do to, to allow us to provide virtual care as well. I don't know about you, but I found prenatal classes were amazing. I learned so much, and yet a lot of them, most of them, maybe all of them, have been canceled. So what is an alternative for a mom or parents to be when you don't have a prenatal class available any longer? Yeah, this is a big concern because prenatal classes offer such a place of support to our patients, especially during a vulnerable time. And we have switched over to virtual care in this aspect as well. So many hospitals are now offering their classes online and many yoga studios and wellness clinics and other places that we used to offer prenatal classes are also offering it uh, online as well. And so take a look and see what's available to you in your community. In addition to just prenatal classes, it's actually being, um, people are being really innovative in doing lactation consultations over um, virtual care. Pelvic physio is being done virtually as well. Our team at St. Mike's, we found that there was a gap in, in this area. And so we created something called a pandemic pregnancy guide. And we're offering prenatal mindfulness classes and yoga classes and other things through Instagram. Um, and there's ways that different people are offering these services. And so we really want our patients to know that we haven't, we, we realize this is a vulnerable time and we're trying to make sure that we still support you as well as we can, even from a distance. 
So when I was pregnant, it's almost seven years ago now, uh, we decided together, Jason and me, that we wanted to have a home birth. Uh, it didn't work out that way, but uh, I imagine this is obviously way before coronavirus. Um, right now, I would do the same thing for sure. Do you think you're going to see an uptick in people choosing to uh, stay home and give birth? Yeah, I think this is one of the biggest questions that's come up right now. Is it safer to deliver at home or or, or in the hospital? This is very much um, pre-pandemic and during the pandemic, a personal decision that has to be discussed with your care provider. Um, the My midwifery colleagues are doing a great job of, of reviewing all the guidelines and finding out what's safe and what needs to be done in a hospital setting. And this really comes down to a discussion with your individual provider. And so it ha comes down to three factors. So patient factors are, um, are you a low-risk pregnancy? Is your, has your pregnancy been low risk to date? And is there any reason why you wouldn't be able to deliver safely at home? So that is one piece to look at, um, which is which was applicable pre-pandemic as well. The other thing is if you have symptoms of COVID-19 um, or you're unwell, there may be a need to reconsider where the birth happens as well. And so that might be a discussion to have with your provider. Um, if you've decided to do a home birth, it might need to be done in hospital if you're not feeling well to be safely monitored after birth. The other factors that are most important right now in considering a home birth are things like personal protective equipment that we that our midwife colleagues need to protect themselves as well. And there are limitations in, in, in PPE uh, in all communities right now. And so that might limit home births. But I know that the call out has been made for this. And so people have have stepped up and that hopefully isn't an issue. The last thing that is, a, is an implication is there's one province right now that has banned home births because the concern, and it's more of a systemic concern, is that they're concerned that, that there may not be the availability of something like an ambulance service available if the resources are diverted towards caring for COVID patients. And so uh, if there was a need for an urgent, which is a rare need, but if there was a need for an urgent transfer to a hospital, they want to ensure that they have services available like ambulances. And so that was where that reasoning came from for that province. I don't think that's going to happen across the country. But again, this is all evolving. And this is why our midwifery colleagues are, and their associations across the country, are meeting regularly and figuring out what's the safest way to care for our patients. Let's talk about the support system, because most people who are pregnant want a support system there during labor. Um, might be a doula, might be a family member. Are there restrictions that are being implemented, particularly in hospitals right now, for extra people coming into a room during birth? Yeah, and this, goes, this is a really great question, because during birth, it's a vulnerable time, and postpartum is a vulnerable time. And so we, and we recognize that it is incredibly important to have a support person present during the labor process and the birthing process, because we know that that helps with outcomes and decreases interventions. And so this being said, every hospital has its own policy in place. And so this would be a discussion again to have with your own, own care provider because they are keeping up to date and they're meeting regularly to find out based on what's happening at their own hospital, what their resources are, what their visitor policies are. Currently, most hospitals are allowing a one support person to come in um, with you during the birthing process. The thing that may vary depending on the hospital that you're at is the postpartum time. There may be differences in how long you can stay, the support person can stay in the hospital with you. Um, some places have no restrictions and some places have a two hour restriction. And this is based on um, safety measures that have been put in place based on their own hospital policy. So this really makes up the point also that it's important to consider packing your bag for your hospital visit early, making sure you have everything that you need in place, because there likely will not be in and out privileges allowed once you are admitted to the hospital to deliver. So we're trying our best to maintain the support person, but everything is changing. And this is, again, changing on a daily or weekly basis. So please do talk to your healthcare provider to find out what is accurately happening at this time for each hospital. Lastly, Dr. Sheila, we're going to leave this to our viewers because we had a lot of people online who asked questions. And Lauren from Instagram asked a really interesting question. She says, is now not a good time to try to get pregnant? Should we postpone our plan? A lot of people have a lot of time to try. What do you say? It is, there is a lot of time to try right now. Uh, uh, so there is no specific recommendation to not try to get pregnant at this time. Uh, I think the concern is around potential risk of miscarriage. That has not been found to, to be true at this point from the data that we know from COVID-19. Again, we are gonna get so much more information in the next year or two about COVID-19, that at this time it is safe to still try to get pregnant uh, and, and do so if, if you can. Dr. Sheila, always a pleasure. Thank you for this great information. And of course, a recap of what we discussed today will be up on our website right after the show. We'll see you soon.